Hi, I'm Rosena Haji. I grew up eating traditionally prepared meals by my grandmother and family. In my travels to many destinations, I enjoyed various cuisines with exotic flavors which has definitely left a mark in my cooking. My recipes are a concoction of childhood memories and my travels around the world and mainly to give prominence to those really tasty dishes that are less talked about. This is the minority taste. So today I'm going to be making another popular Sri Lankan Malaysian dish. Actually the origins of this dish is all the way from Indonesia but Indonesia and Malaysia are very similar in language and cuisine and culture. Today we're going to make chuka beef also known as daging chuka. The ingredients are pretty simple and basic and it's actually really easy to make. It it does, however, take a little bit of time because it's slow cooked. You can have this with rice or fried rice or anything you want. But we have like a set menu. I'll talk about the menu a little bit later on. We'll get into the ingredients first. So what you're going to need, about 800 grams of pure veal. We really need soft mellow meat for this. What I've done here is I've added just a tablespoon of vinegar with a little bit of salt, just a touch of salt, maybe a quarter teaspoon of salt. Now when you're cooking beef, you have to always remember to add less salt because the beef is gonna sweat out meat salt anyway. So you have to be careful when you're using salt. So just a quarter teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of crushed pepper and I have marinated this. I have forked the beef before the marination and then I have added the vinegar, salt and pepper and mixed it and I have marinated this for about an hour now. This is three large Bombay onions sliced into rings like this. Now you can cut it thinner than this if you wish but we prefer it this way because it's gonna be very soft and slow cooked. Two large pots of garlic, one and a half inch of ginger. You have to get more of the onion flavor and the spices so you can add less ginger if you prefer. One stick of Ceylon cinnamon, about six to seven pods of cardamom. You have to crush it before you use it. Four cloves and two or three pieces of pandan. Now a lot of people ask me why I always tie my pandan this way. It's because it releases more flavor when you tie it this way. So that's another kitchen tip for you for today. You're also going to need about two tablespoons of pure ghee just to saute everything out. Half a glass, a coffee glass or a coffee mug of vinegar. Take a bit of a deep pot and when it's heating up you add your two tablespoon of ghee. So you're adding your onion into the oil. If you're not supposed to fry the onions, you're only going to cook it until it turns a little bit pink. It, once it turns color, you're going to add your meat in here. So as you can see, it has turned pink in color. It's not brown as yet. You add just a little bit of salt. When you're cooking beef, you have to be careful with salt because the meat alone will sweat out a lot of salt so you don't want the meat to be too salty that is why we have to be careful when you're adding the salt so when it changes color you take your meat and you add it onto your bed of onions i have cut it into big chunks you can cut it smaller if you like but then it's going to be like a beef steak instead of a chuka meat so the best thing is to cut it into chunks, let it cook and then you can shred it if you want, you can cut it into slices if you like. You will see once this is done. What we are doing here is we are sauteing the beef on all four sides. 
because remember the beef is already forked and it's already marinated so you don't have to fuss with it too much but you have to like sear it on all four sides so that it seals and packs in that really really nice vinegar salt and pepper flavor once you seared it on all four sides what what you mean by sear is it has to turn color but inside it's going to be all red just sear it and then you add your spices your cinnamon your pandan your crushed cardamom pods just four cloves and then one inch of sliced ginger don't add too much of ginger like I said before because you don't want it to overpower it with ginger then sliced garlic and then you add your vinegar and just mix it in a little bit once you mix that through you're gonna add about one or one and a half teaspoons of crushed black pepper beef chuka is a very sweet onion and a vinegar taste to it than anything else so make sure when you're adding your spices like the pepper cinnamon ginger whatever make sure that you don't overpower the onion vinegar taste so if you remember that you will get the flavor right this time you're going to get a beautiful flavor from all the spices that you've added then you're going to add enough water just to cover the beef and now you're going to really let this slow cook it's going to take at least about 45 minutes but I assure you it's going to be so worth it now if the water evaporates faster just keep adding water till the meat softens but make sure that you add adequate salt when you do add water but also remember that the salt has to be a little less when you taste the gravy at this point in the mix of boiling it might overflow so you have to be watchful when you're boiling it and also don't worry about the froth after about 45 minutes to one hour this is what it's going to look like it's going to give you a very thick gravy and ground up beautiful chunks of meat and this is the end result of the beef chuka you can shred this and add it back into the gravy but I like to cut it into sizable chunks against the grain look how soft that meat is it just pulls apart and then I like to add it back into the gravy so that it absorbs more flavor and then just make sure that it absorbs all that gravy so that the end result should look something like this This is why when you're boiling you should have adequate sauce in there so that once you shred it or once you slice it and then you add that back into the gravy there should be ample gravy for the meat to absorb that is how you get that full-on really really nice flavor into the beef I see a lot of unnecessary things added as in I I believe that some of the ingredients might enhance the flavor but beef chuka is supposed to be a very mellow taste and flavor the main flavor that should shine and come through is the meat this sweet onion that sweet onion caramelized flavor the vinegar and the pepper now I've seen a lot of recipes that includes green chili curry leaves 
coconut milk so that the gravy would be thicker but the thing is if you add adequate onions it all cooks down and melts into the gravy it's going to be really really thick let me show you look at how thick this gravy is you really don't need coconut milk to make the gravy thick if you add coconut milk into this it's going to be a very different taste and I've also seen people add curry leaves and green chilies into it. Actually, that is for a Sri Lankan beef steak, also known as the bistake. But that is a completely different flavor. There you have it, Sri Lankan Malaysian chuka beef or daging chuka. How we have it back home in Sri Lanka, especially the Malays, is you have it with the beef chuka. A little bit of dal curry and we also have greens now you can use beans but we prefer morning glory also known as kangkung sauteed in chili and white rice we keep it simple because we want to enjoy all the beautiful flavors in the daging chuka look at how beautifully and softly that meat gets broken off and it shreds off and a little bit of rice and that dal and a little bit of kangkung take it all mmm it's just like how my grandmother makes it it's so so good and especially when you pair it up with something so simple like dal, rice and kangkung it's more than enough it also pairs well with just a simple egg fried rice or a simple noodles or you can have it with bread whatever it is it's just a mellow flavor with a kick of pepper that is surely going to win everyone's heart I hope you enjoyed this recipe please like share and subscribe and let me know what you think.